Welcome to Solutions, Colloids, and Suspensions. Back in video 1.2a, we looked at different types of mixtures, homogeneous and heterogeneous. And more recently, we've discussed water's role in forming aqueous solutions, which are homogeneous mixtures. But water can also be a part of heterogeneous mixtures, and we're going to look at two categories of heterogeneous mixtures and compare them with solutions. The three categories of mixtures that we're going to look at today are solutions, colloids, and suspensions. We've already mentioned that solutions are homogeneous. Colloids and suspensions, on the other hand, are two forms of heterogeneous mixtures. So that alone really sets solutions apart from colloids and suspensions. Now we want to look at mixtures involving water. So in each of these cases, we're going to dissolve something and have some solute mixed in with the water. In a solution, we find that the solute particle size, so the size of the solute molecules, are very small, typically between 0.1 and 1 nanometers in size. So very small particles are dissolved in solutions. In colloids, we see slightly larger particles. These particles in a colloid tend to be between 1 and 1,000 nanometers in size. Suspensions have the largest particles mixed in. These are typically greater than 1,000 nanometers in size. And the particles are so large, you can typically see the different phases of the mixture. One common suspension is made while cooking. When you need to thicken gravy, you add flour to water. And that thickens the gravy. Now let's talk about the stability of these solutions. Stability for solution refers to how long the solute is going to stay dissolved in the solution. For solutions, stability is very high. Solutions are stable the dissolved solute is going to stay dissolved. That's because the particles are not affected by gravity. So that means the particles are not going to settle out of solution. They're going to stay dissolved the entire time. Colloids are also stable. The particles are larger, so they are affected by gravity a little bit, but not enough to cause them to settle out and fall to the bottom of the solution. However, in suspension, the particles are very large, so the particles are affected by gravity, which causes a separation over time. And you see the particles settle out to the bottom of the mixture. You can see this happen with a gravy example too. If you let gravy sit out over time undisturbed, it starts to separate into different phases. So we consider suspensions to be unstable mixtures. They don't stay mixed whereas solutions and colloids are both stable. The particles stay dissolved. There's one more important property that helps distinguish between solutions, colloids, and suspensions. And that's called the Tyndall effect. The Tyndall effect is a scattering of light as light hits the solute particles in the mixture. We're going to take a look at an example of this and see whether solutions, colloids, or suspensions exhibit this Tyndall effect based on their dissolved particles. Here we have three beakers filled with mixtures. The beaker on the left, the blue one, has a solution in it. The middle beaker has a colloid in it, and the last beaker has a suspension in it. We're going to shine a laser pointer at each one of these and see if the light of the laser pointer is scattered as it passes through the solution. First you can see the laser pointer hitting the wall, not passing through any of the beakers, just to see what it would look like without passing through a liquid. As we move the pointer over and shine it through the solution, you can see the light dot appear on the far wall, but you don't see anything in the solution itself. The light passes right through the solution and forms a dot on the wall. When we go to the colloid, as we shine the light through, you can see the beam actually show in the solution, because the light from the laser pointer is hitting the particles of the colloid and scattering enough so that your eye can see it. It also hits the back wall and leaves a spot on the wall. So there is scattering for a colloid, but there's not that much. When we go to the suspension and try and put the laser pointer through it, the light is severely scattered to the point where it does not travel through the beaker and actually makes it look like it's lighting up the solution a little bit. So colloids and suspensions both exhibit the Tyndall effect, the scattering of light. But solutions do not. If we look back at the original picture of the solution, colloid, and suspension, 
you can also start to see the separation occurring with the suspension. This particular suspension is a mixture of starch and water. And as you can see, near the top of the mixture, the starch has already started separating away and being dragged down towards the bottom of the container. That wraps up our discussion on solutions, colloids, and suspensions. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class. Let's talk a little bit more about colloids. Particularly, we want to answer the question, why do the particles not settle out of the solution even though they are slightly affected by gravity? The answer to that question has something to do with Brownian motion. Brownian motion is the reason why the particles in the colloid do not settle. Brownian motion describes the random erratic movement of particles in the liquid. So the molecules of the solvent are moving randomly and erratically and the collisions with the solute particles is enough to keep them from settling out in solution. There are enough particle collisions to prevent those colloid particles from settling out in the colloid. Now Brownian motion was first discovered by Robert Brown. Robert Brown was studying pollen grains suspended in water looking at them under a microscope. And what he saw were tiny particles that are randomly flitting around and some flashes of light. Those flashes of light were scintillations. And those flashes of light were a result of the particles moving and colliding erratically. So this Brownian motion is what's responsible for the colloid particles staying suspended in the mixture. The second thing we want to look at for colloids is one particular type of colloid. And that's a colloid with a liquid liquid mixture. Now, why would you have a special kind of liquid-liquid mixture? There are no large particles of a liquid that get separated. Typically, you either have a liquid that can dissolve in another liquid, like water and alcohol, or you have two liquids that can't mix, like oil and water. But there is a way to make a liquid-liquid colloid, and that is called an emulsion. An example of a common emulsion is when you take oil and vinegar and try to mix them. Oil and vinegar put together will not mix. However, if you add egg yolk, egg yolk will act as what we call an emulsifying agent and it allows the oil and vinegar to become a mixture, a stable mixture that's a colloid, particularly an emulsion. When these are combined together, we get mayonnaise. So mayonnaise is an emulsion, which is a colloid, a liquid-liquid colloid of oil and vinegar and egg yolk mixed together. 